In the name of God, creator of the earth, redeemer of her ungrateful inhabitants, and sustainer of her being. The Greeks called her Gaia. We sometimes call her Mother Earth, although our species shouldn't be proud of how we treat her if she's our mother. She formed four and a half billion years ago. We can't imagine how it worked, though physicists apparently can. It involves gravity and shock waves from exploding stars and a combination of crashing things and clumping things. She was then what she is now, even if we don't experience her this way. A ball of molten metal and rock. Now Gaia's surface cooled enough to form a crust, and enough water and atmosphere evolved to form what we now call the biosphere, a thin layer atop the crust which eventually plants and later animals could live on. Plants knew how to turn carbon dioxide and sunlight into oxygen, and animals came to know how to burrow and fly and hunt and mate. And God knew it was all good. But really, the earth is still 99% a ball of molten and solid metal and rock. And 1% crust, this fragile crust, full of cracks. It slowly shifts around on the red-hot mantle. We remember whenever a volcano or earthquake reveals the unstable, unstable truth. Gaia is alive. She just moves a whole lot more slowly than we do, we scampering creatures around the crust. Even oak trees and giant sequoias grow faster than Mother Earth. But speed means nothing to eternity. We've been celebrating Earth Day for 50 years. <laughs> I don't think she even notices, but we're not doing it for her. Is she aware of how we're heating up the biosphere? Does she ever say to the oceans, for example, hey, aqua, looks like you're going to be getting all that ice back, huh? You're going to change currents again? Because glaciers come and go. Antarctica, still at the South Pole, was once covered in forest. And ocean currents, like the Gulf Stream, can change too and give places like England a climate like Alaska. It's happened over and over on that tiny 1% of the Earth that we call home. We are literally superficial. So when we celebrate Earth Day, we're doing it for us, not for her. By Earth, we really mean the part of Earth that we interact with. The water, the blue sky, the plants we need and the animals we care about. But she doesn't mind. She's mom. She knows how tiny are the worlds of children. For me, celebrating Earth Day begins with a realistic look at how tiny we are and how brief our time on Earth has been. Without zooming out any further beyond Earth to the sun or even looking at galaxies and then zooming even further out to the mind of God, just looking at it from a planetary vantage point, we are dust mites scurrying around on a mossy wet rock. And I think that's what D Doubting Thomas realized when he warily put his hand into Jesus' sword wound. Why isn't it bleeding, he wondered. How deep is it? Why didn't somebody stitch it up? Huh. I wonder if there are nail holes too. And then he saw eternity, divinity, another dimension we are not normally allowed to see. <laughs> Poor Thomas. He gets criticized for not believing the unbelievable. Resurrection doesn't happen, he thought. Well, okay, it might happen at the end of time, but not now in this evil world where soldiers torture and execute people like our dear Lord. Nope, Thomas was not faithless. He was curious. He was practical. Like all the scientists who figured out that the core of Mother Earth is red-hot metal. Just like those scientists, Thomas's evidence was indirect, but he was totally convinced. Fifty years ago, some people decided to pay tribute to Gaia herself and to resolve to treat her better. 
we began to clean up some of our rivers to send less pollution up some of our smokestacks to drive cars that fouled the air actually quite a bit less. But we also began building and wanting bigger houses and filling them with more things, cutting down more trees to graze more methane-producing cattle, and setting up gigantic server farms in the desert which guzzle giga-hyper-megawatts of electricity. <laughs> the cloud? It's not just a cloud. At least until a month ago, we frequently flew and we got rewarded with platinum points and free buffets in the airline club room. And meanwhile, tons of liquid carbon got incinerated in jet engines and got turned into tons of carbon gases. Oh, the prayer book refers to this fragile earth, our island home. You know, the planet isn't that fragile. She's 99% rock and molten metal. It's the surface, the crust that's so fragile. Her water has been cleaner and dirtier over the last 3.8 billion years. It's the biosphere that's fragile. And we are doing plenty to mess with that thin layer of life we depend on. Yes, we are insignificant compared to the mass and energy of a whole planet. But tiny things are not insignificant, as the mindless microscopic virus COVID-19 is teaching us all too well. Physical objects like rocks don't have thoughts or feelings as far as we can tell. Gaia as a planet doesn't care what we do. But Gaia as a metaphor or a personification of God, the creator of all that lives and moves and has existence, we believe she does care. God gave us this biosphere as an island bubble to keep us safe and to do wonderful things. We're so gifted, creative, free. We're generous. In those ways, we're made to resemble God, made of everything Gaia offers. And we keep going because of her bounty. And we're curious, too. We want to understand how Earth works and why we're here. But we don't seem to be very brave. Not like Thomas, who bravely investigated the impossible human body standing right in front of him. Jesus was dead, but obviously alive. Wounds untreated, but evidently not a problem. If we were to actually put our hands into the wounds of Mother Earth and accept what we've done to her precious biosphere, would we fall on our faces like Thomas did and say something like, my Lord and my God, my lady and my goddess? Would we begin to live differently? Would we fly less? Sell one of the cars? Would we move into a smaller place? Stop eating meat and unsustainable foods? Would we find a job we can walk to? Turn the lawn over to prairie grass? join a solar co-op, put panels on the roof. Thomas did not just say wow when he realized he was putting his hand into the side of what humans would later call the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Thomas didn't just say my Lord and my God. Tradition says he traveled to India and told his story over and over again. And to this day, millions of Christians there honor him as a saint and do not denigrate his practical skepticism. We are honoring Earth Day in the hope that at least some of us will be brave like Thomas, that we'll see the wounds our species has inflicted, uh, inflicted on our great mother and get to work on projects that heal some of those wounds. She is four and a half billion years old, and she'll be around long after we're gone. But God gave her to us. How ungrateful of us to treat her this way. We should love our mother, right? How incurious of us not to want to see her wounds. Shouldn't we do more than just mail her a nice Earth Day card? 
How timid of us not to get to work. Amen. Happy Earth Day.